The once great battleship awaited her fate, bobbing in the gentle waves as the blast zone was secured. She used to be a fierce warrior, intimidating and stoic on the seas. But now, she was nothing but target practice for a nation that hated her and what she represented. Three, two, one. The underwater explosion sent sea spray into the air. But what would happen to Nagato? Welcome to Shipwreck Sunday. My name is Eleanor. Just a quick disclaimer for our younger audience before we dive in. This story may be disturbing to some, so viewer discretion is advised. Okay, everyone, let's get into it. We continue Warship Month with Episode 2. The Japanese battleship Nagato was an iconic Japanese warship with several design innovations that makes us ship nerds go nuts. Nagato, named after the Nagato province, was sponsored by Admiral Keito Tomasaburo, with the contract for the ship being awarded to the Kurei Naval Arsenal, one of four principal naval shipyards owned and operated by the Imperial Japanese Navy. She was laid down on August 28, 1917, being launched on November 9, 1919, and completed one year and six days later on November 15, 1920. She'd be commissioned on November 25, 1920. Before we get any further into her career, let's look at her specs and some of those insane design aspects I mentioned earlier. Nagato was a Nagato-class super dreadnought battleship that displaced 32,720 tons or 32,200 long tons. In Imperial measurements, she was 708 feet long, had a beam of 95 feet and 3 inches wide, and a draft of 29 feet and 9 inches deep. In metric measurements, that's a length of 215.8 meters long, a beam of 29.02 meters wide, and a draft of 9.08 meters deep. In 1944, she underwent a major refit, and her specs increased drastically. Her displacement shifted to 39,130 tons and 38,510 long tons. Her imperial measurements increased to 738 feet in length, a beam of 113 feet and 6 inches wide, and a draft of 31 feet and 2 inches deep. In metric measurements, that's a length of 224.94 meters long, a beam of 34.6 meters wide, and a draft of 9.49 meters deep. Her complement in the beginning consisted of 1,333 officers and enlisted men, increasing to 1,734 by 1944. Now let's look at some of those impressive innovations. In 1930, Nagato's bow was remodeled in order to reduce the amount of sea spray splashing up on deck in a head sea. Originally, she had issues with vast amount of funnel smoke choking out the crew on the bridge, so a fingernail-shaped deflector was put on the fore funnel in 1922 to push the funnel smoke away from her crew. These minor innovations weren't the only innovations, but her propulsion systems were extraordinary as well. She was equipped with four Gihon-geared steam turbines, each of them driving a separate propeller shaft, turning four screws. This produced 80,000 horsepower or 60,000 kilowatts of power total, and she needed a lot of steam to create that much power. To do this, she was equipped with 21 Campon water tube boilers, 15 of which were purely oil-fired, while the remaining six were powered by a mixture of oil and coal. With this setup, she could travel a range of 5,500 nautical miles at a speed of 16 knots. If you're looking for imperial measurements, that's a range of 6,300 miles at 18 miles per hour. And if you're looking for metric measurements, that's a range of 10,200 kilometers at 30 kilometers per hour. During her sea trials, her maximum speed reached a staggering 26.7 knots, or 30.7 miles per hour and 49.4 kilometers per hour, exceeding expectations by 0.2 knots. This doesn't seem like much, but it is impressive. For armament and armor, we're going off of her World War II specs. For radar systems, she was equipped with one Type 21 air search radar, two Type 13 early warning radars, and two Type 22 surface search radars. For guns, she had four twin 41 centimeter guns, 18 single 14 centimeter guns, four twin 127 millimeter or 5 inch dual purpose guns, and 98 25 millimeter or 1 inch anti-aircraft guns, making her a formidable foe. 
She also had three float planes launched by a single catapult, giving her a greater advantage in the air. As for armor, she had 305 millimeter or 12 inch thick plating along the water line that tapered off, and above this was a strake of 229 millimeter or 9 inch thick armor. On the main deck, the armor was 69 millimeters or 2.7 inches thick and became thicker on the lower deck at 75 millimeters or 3 inches thick. Her turrets and guns were also heavily armored, making it difficult to disarm. She was quite the ship. And this is quite the video. If you're enjoying this video, leave me a like, subscribe to the channel for more content, and let me know down in the comments section below. Enough of this self-indulgence, let's get back to Nagato. After her completion, she became the flagship of Rear Admiral Sojiro Tokinai. But one of the most interesting things she did before World War II had to do with the 1923 Great Kanto earthquake. This earthquake, for those unaware, and for younger audience members, was an earthquake that struck the Kanto Plain on September 1st, 1923 at a magnitude between 7.9 and 8.2 on the seismic magnitude scale. After this earthquake, Nagata was tasked with taking supplies from Kyushu to the victims on September 4th, just three days after the quake. After this, her and her sister Mutsu would sink the now obsolete battleship Satsuma on September 7, 1924 during their gunnery practice in Tokyo Bay. She was then transferred to the reserve of the 1st Division on December 1st of that year, becoming a gunnery training vessel. While on reserve, her anti-aircraft armament was upgraded in 1932 and began modernization on April 1st, 1934. On February 26, 1936, there was an attempted coup d'etat by dissatisfied army officers, and so Nagata was deployed in Tokyo Bay in support of the government. In August of 1936, she transported 1,749 men from Shikoku to Shanghai during the Second Sino-Japanese War, with her float planes bombing targets in Shanghai on the 24th, and she'd return to Sasebo the next day. On December 1st, 1936, she once again became a training ship. She would once again be crowned the flagship of the Combined Fleet on December 15th, 1938, being refitted early on in 1941 to prepare to join World War II. On December 2nd, 1941, Isuroku Yamamoto uttered a code phrase that changed the world forever, Nitaka Yama Nobore, which translates to climb Mount Nitaka, and he'd uttered these words from Nagato. Nagato was stationed at Hashirijima to signal the first air fleet in the North Pacific to attack Pearl Harbor. After the attack on Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941, the United States declared war on Japan, thus opening up the Pacific theater of World War II. On December 8, 1941, she, her sister Mutsu, and the battleships Ise, Yamashiro, Hyuga, and Fuso of Battleship Division II, alongside the light carrier Hosho, which acted as distant cover for the withdrawal of the fleet attacking Pearl Harbor, all sortied for the Bonin Islands. Sortieing, for anyone unfamiliar with the term, is the defensive deployment or dispatchment of one military unit from a strong point. They would return six days later with Yamamoto stripping Nagato of her flagship title and transferring it to the battleship Yamato on February 12, 1942. After this, Nagato underwent a brief refit. In June of 1942, Nagato was assigned to the main body of the First Fleet during the Battle of Midway, fighting alongside her sister Mutsu as well as the light cruiser Sendai, Yamato, Hosho, nine destroyers, and four auxiliary ships. All four carriers of the First Air Fleet were sunk on June 4th, and after this, Yamamoto tried to entice American forces west within the range of Japanese air groups at Wake Island. However, the American forces didn't bite, instead withdrawing, so Nagato saw not hide nor hair of the American forces. On July 14th, she'd be shifted to Battleship Division 2 and became the flagship of the First Fleet. She'd remain in Japanese waters, training until August of 1943. In August of 1943, the escort carrier Taiyo, Fuso, Yamato, and Nagato were transferred to truck in the Caroline Islands, being escorted there by five destroyers and two heavy cruisers. There was a carrier raid on Tarawa on September 18, 1943, and so Nagato and much of the First Fleet headed for Anawetic to hunt the American forces. However, they failed, and so they returned to truck on September 23rd, though they did manage to intercept some American radio traffic that alluded to the Americans possibly attacking Wake Island. So Nagato and much of the First Fleet headed to Anawetic on October 17th to intercept the Americans. They arrived two days later, but left after four fruitless days, arriving back at truck by October 26th. 
Now we are heading into 1944, starting on February 1st. Nagato left truck with Fuso in tow to avoid a possible American air raid, safely arriving at Palau on February 4th. They left on February 16th to escape yet another air raid, arriving at Linga Island near Singapore on February 21st. She'd become the flagship of Vice Admiral Matome Ugaki, the commander of Battleship Division 1, on February 25th, 1944. Though sadly, this wouldn't last long. Everyone wanted Yamato, and so did he, making Yamato his flagship on May 5th. Nagato underwent another brief refit, staying in Linga after this for training until May 11th when she would move to Tawi Tawi one day later. The division then transferred to the 1st Mobile Fleet, being commanded by Vice Admiral Jisaburo Azawa. Battleship Division 1 and Nagato left Tawi Tawi on June 10th, heading for Batyan in preparation for Operation Kon. Operation Kon was a planned counterattack against the American invasion of Biak, which was part of the Western New Guinea campaign of World War II. Operation Kon was cancelled after intel came in about the American attacks on Saipan. Therefore, Nagato and the rest of her fleet were sent to the Mariana Islands, and these battleships met up with the main force on June 16th. During the Battle of the Philippine Sea, Nagato would be the escort, protecting two aircraft carriers, Junyo and Hyo, as well as the light carrier Ryo. Aircraft launched from the American carrier USS Bella Wood attacked Junyo, and so Nagato fired 41-centimeter Type 3 San Kaidan incendiary anti-aircraft shrapnel shells at the airplane. They claim to have destroyed two of these planes, but it's not confirmed. She was strafed by American planes during the heat of battle, but it did nothing to her or her crew. Hyo was sunk during this battle, and her survivors were scooped up by Nagato. They'd be transferred to the carrier Zukaku once they reached Okinawa on June 22nd. Nagato continued to Kure, undergoing yet another refit, then loading a regiment of the 28th Infantry Division on July 9th, 1944, escorting them to Okinawa and arriving there on July 11th. After this, she continued on to Linga on July 20th. One of the largest battles for many Japanese battleships was the Battle of Leyte Gulf, with Nagato sailing for Brunei Bay on October 18, 1944, in order to meet up with the rest of the main Japanese fleet to prepare for Operation Shell 1, the counterattack planned against American landings at Leyte. This plan had carrier forces luring American carrier fleets north of Leyte, and this would open up the way for Vice Admiral Takeo Kurita's center force to enter Leyte Gulf and then destroy American forces on the island. Nagato would be part of the center force, alongside Musashi and Yamato. The center force left Brunei for the Philippines on October 22, 1944. The center force moved as one, just as our patrons support us as one. This episode couldn't be possible without our lovely patrons. Thank you all so much. If you'd like to support the channel and future episodes, go to patreon.com slash Sunday to join. Okay, let's get into the Battle of the Sibuyan Sea. Nagato would be hit by numerous waves of American fighters and dive bombers at the Battle of the Subuyan Sea on October 24th, and she was struck by two bombs from planes launched from the carrier USS Franklin and light carrier USS Cabot at 2.16 p.m. The first of these bombs disabled five of her casemate guns, damaged the air intake to the number one boiler room, which would render one propeller shaft useless for 24 minutes until it could be fixed, and jammed one of the Type 89 gun mounts. We don't know what the second bomb did, unfortunately, but the two bombs did manage to kill 52 and injure an unknown number of men between both of them. The following day on October 25th, the center force traversed the San Bernardino Strait, heading toward Leyte Gulf. The Battle of Shamar was our next engagement, and here, Nagato directly engaged multiple escort carriers and destroyers of the Task Force Tappy 3. She opened fire for the first time ever on an enemy ship at 6.01 a.m., though she missed. At 6.54, the ruthless American destroyer USS Hearman launched a spread of torpedoes at Haruna, a fast battleship, though they'd miss and instead head toward Yamato and Nagato, who were running parallel to Haruna. To avoid the torpedoes, Yamato and Nagato were forced 10 miles or 16 kilometers away from the engagement until the torpedoes ran out of fuel and were dead in the water. Nagato turned back, engaging the Americans and they claimed to have damaged one cruiser, but again, we can't confirm this information. At 9.10 a.m., Nagato and the rest of the force were ordered to head north. By 10.20 a.m., this changed and the fleet headed south again. However, they came under increasingly more intense air attack, being forced to retreat again by 12.36 p.m. 
Not even 10 minutes later, at 12.43 p.m., Nagato's bow was struck with two bombs, though the damage wasn't terrible. Four gunners got washed away at 4.56 p.m. when Nagato made a sharp turn trying to avoid dive bomber attacks, with a destroyer being sent in to save the men. However, they were sadly lost to the sea. On October 26th, Nagato was retreating to Brunei when again her and her fleet came under air attack. Over the next two days, she'd fired 99 410mm and 653 14cm shells, losing 38 crewmen and 105 being wounded. During the Battle of Leyte Gulf, Japan lost Musashi, Chitose, Wakaba, and Zukaku. The Americans lost USS Princeton and USS St. Lowe. Now we are getting into the final days of World War II and Nagato's role in this. On November 15th, Nagato was moved to Battleship Division 3 of the 2nd Fleet. There was an aerial attack on November 16th at Brunei and so Yamato, the fast battleship Congo, and Nagato left on November 17th, heading for the safety of Kure. During this escape, Congo and one of the escorting destroyers were sunk by the American submarine USS Sea Lion on November 21st. Nagato arrived at Yokosuka, Japan for repairs on November 25th, though there was an unfortunate lack of fuel and materials that prevented her from re-entering service, so she became a floating anti-aircraft battery. Her funnel and main mast were removed to improve the arcs of fire for her AA guns, with Battleship Division 3 being disbanded on January 1, 1945, so she was reassigned to Battleship Division 1. This also was disbanded on February 10th, so she became a coastal defense ship in the Yokosuka Naval District. Here, Nagato was docked alongside a pier, with a converted submarine chaser being used to provide her with steam and electricity, and a donkey boiler being placed on the pier for heating and cooking purposes. Being her AA guns lacked the power they needed, they were only partially operational. On April 20th, she'd be placed on reserve. In June of 1945, half of her AA guns, all of her secondary weapons, her rangefinders, and her searchlights were placed ashore. Her crew was reduced to under a thousand men, and she was heavily camouflaged. On July 18, 1945, that heavy camouflage did nothing, because she was attacked by fighter bombers and torpedo bombers from five American aircraft carriers. This was part of Admiral William Halsey Jr.'s campaign to eliminate the Imperial Japanese Navy's remaining capital ships, and though Nagato was struck with two bombs, she'd survive. The first of these two bombs was a 500-pound or 230-kilogram bomb that hit the bridge, detonating when it hit her conning tower and killing her executive officer along with 12 sailors. The second bomb hit the deck just aft of the main mast, detonating when it struck the number 3 barbette. It neither damaged the barbette nor the turret above it, though it did blow a 12-foot in diameter hole in the deck above the officer's lounge, killing 21 men and damaging four Type 96 guns. To allow the Americans to believe they'd severely wounded the vessel, the damage was left unrepaired and some of the ballast tanks were pumped full of seawater to allow her to sit deeper in the water, making it appear as though she was touching the bottom of the harbor. During the night from August 1st to the 2nd in 1945, the Yokosuka Naval District received word that a large convoy was on its way to Sagami Bay, so Nagato was ordered on the offensive immediately. The ship, still disguised as a broken vessel in the harbor, was completely unprepared to attack, but they began to prepare immediately. However, after being prepared, the attack order never came since it appeared to be a false alarm. On August 30th, after the Empire of Japan surrendered and American occupation began, sailors from USS Iowa, Underwater Demolition Team 18, and USS Horace A. Base secured Nagato. And by the time World War II officially ended on September 2, 1945, Nagato was the last Japanese battleship still floating. She was stricken from the Navy list on September 15th. This should be the end of her story, but alas, it is not. She'd be one of many ships selected for Operation Crossroads. Operation Crossroads was a pair of nuclear weapons tests held by the United States at the Bikini Atoll in mid-1946. In mid-March of that year, Nagato left Yokosuka, still badly damaged and only able to reach 10 knots because only two of her four propeller shafts were functional. However, the damage she'd received underwater wasn't repaired either, and it was so bad that her pumps couldn't keep up. The light cruiser, Sakawa, her consort, broke down on March 28th and Nagato tried to tow her. However, one of her boilers misfired and the ship ran out of fuel in foul weather. By the time tugboats arrived to take her to Anawetic on March 30th, she had listed 7 degrees to port. 
She was towed at the speed of one knot and reached Eniwetok on April 4th, where she was temporarily repaired. She then traveled to Bikini in May at a speed of 13 knots. In Bikini, she was set to sink. Test Able, the first blast of Operation Crossroads and an air blast set off on July 1st, only slightly damaged Nagato as she was 1,500 meters or 1,640 yards from ground zero. A skeleton crew boarded the ship to assess damage and prepare her for the second blast on July 25th, 1946. Just to test things out, her boilers were operated for 36 hours and everything was normal. Test Baker was an underwater explosion, and the ship was only 870 meters or 950 yards from ground zero. Nagato was able to ride out the tsunami after the explosion with what seemed like little damage. She had a starboard list of 2 degrees after the waves dissipated. She was dangerously radioactive, so this was the most thorough examination we could get. Gradually over the next five days, her list increased, and finally she capsized and sank overnight from the 29th to the 30th of July in 1946. And that was the sad, pitiful end of a Japanese warrior. Her wreck is upside down, and her four propellers stick up toward the heavens, and she rests at a depth of 110 feet or 33.5 meters under the water. She's a popular scuba diving destination in recent years, with the Times listing Nagato as one of the top 10 wreck diving sites in the world as of 2007. Her story is full of battles and bravery, spiraling down into a disappointing and strange end in the Bikini Atoll. I wish she'd been preserved since she was such a feat of engineering and the last of the Imperial Japanese Navy's battleships left standing. Unfortunately, Americans were, and still are, angry about Pearl Harbor, and so this ship was destined to be destroyed. Rest in peace to all that served on Nagato. Even if we don't agree with what they were tasked to do, they were soldiers doing their duty and still deserve respect as human beings. If you liked that story and wanted to hear more war stories, check out our World War II Warships playlist in the cards. Stay tuned next week for the story of one of the most popular warships ordered by King Henry VIII of the Tudor dynasty, the Mary Rose. Thank you for tuning in to Shipwreck Sunday, have a great week, and we'll see you next time.